Hi, it's Steve. Um, I was going to go over how to check your squares for accuracy. Um, in the past, I would just buy the squares and use them. And, you know, any things like my miter saw or anything else, I would just buy it and start using it. And now I know that you're supposed to check it when you get it and make sure that, you know, things are really set up correctly and 90 degrees and all of that so your work can be accurate. So I was going to go over today how to check your combination square and how to fix it. This is just a real cheap one that I got. This is a really old Stanley um, framing square. And then this one's a maze 24 inch square. They're both fairly old. You know. These two squares aren't the greatest because the contrast on the markings and stuff at some angles it looks just fine, at other angles you can't really see anything at all, any of the markings. So they have some better squares now, but um, you can actually adjust this. This one was accurate already, and I've had it for decades. Um, this one was a little less than 90 degrees, so it was like, you know, in this way more, only, you know, very, very slightly. And by using a center punch on the inside and really hitting it hard on my vise that spreads this apart more and if it, your square is, needs to go the other way if it's more than 90 degrees you can use a center punch on this corner which will spread it closer together um, and that worked on mine so I'll show you that in a second how to test them the combination square Tightening this, because this slides back and forth. Tightening this brings the blade down. And so on each side of this, we're, there's a little nub that sticks up one on each side. And if those nubs aren't parallel, the blade's going to end up being crooked. And this one was the most off of any of the squares. Um, it's very cheap. And, uh, but I was able to get it back and it's looking good now so I can actually start using it to check stuff for being square. So let me get a different angle on the camera and I'll show you uh, how I tested these. So to check these squares you want to start out with a piece of plywood that has a very straight edge along one edge either from your table saw or the factory cut from, the, from when you bought it. What you can do is then you put the short edge of the square up against that straight edge. Make sure it's all the way flat. And then with a very sharp pencil, which this one's getting a little dull, make a line down there. Then you can flip it. And what I do is go on the other side of the line, because that's where the square is on the other side. Get it really straight. And I'm giving it a little bit of room and making it a little f further apart, like a sixteenth of an inch, but some people go ahead and at the bottom they put it exactly on the line. But I just like to go a little off and, and make a line. And then you can check it. So this one might be actually a little bit off, but it's pretty close. So there's a little distance here, which I did on purpose. And then it should be that same distance up at the other end here. And this maybe is a little bit too far, which means this is a little less than 90 degrees, and I could probably hit that with the center punch. So you put it on the vise or some, you know, something hard, not on this obviously, and to get it to go more than 90 because um, it was this line right here. Um, it needs to go a little further towards that because it's a little too wide up there. So I need to hit it with a punch right in the in here. Don't get too close to the edge because you might spread that out and then you'd have to file that down to get a flat edge on here. So right in here somewhere you can do multiples of them if you need to go further. So hit it really hard with the hammer on the vise and then come and recheck it and do it again and, and see how it's going because you don't want to go too far. And try it again and again and then you'll, 
eventually it'll be just parallel. So the same one on the bigger square, only that's what these longer lines are for when I did mine. If it's the other way, what you would do, if it needs to um, go more in, if it's more than 90 degrees, and it needs to go this way, you would um, hit it in this area, which would cause it to, this, to spread out, moving this whole thing in a little bit. So that method works pretty good because it worked on my bigger 24 inch square. On the combination square, um, there's two little nubs in here that are tabs or whatever inside the slot. So if you loosen this up, you can pull this blade out. You can keep loosening this nut and pull it completely off. I won't do it right now, but there's a little spring and then um, once these are off, you can pull that whole piece out, which makes it easier to file. So on my square, this piece is just aluminum, so it's very soft metal. You figure out which way it needs to go based on your measurement when you have it in here. Extend it all the way, except, you know, put together. Um, and then you'll see which way it needs to go, which way and based on that, you'll see which nub or tab in here is a little too long. And you'll want to file that down. So since it's aluminum, this file is really thin and will fit in here. Um, you don't want to file too much. So file a little bit, put it back together, and test it out. So I do the same thing in a clear spot here. Mark a line, turn it the other way, and mark a line. So this one might be a tiny little bit off. I could probably do a little more filing on this one. This part right in this nub here needs to go down a little bit. back together, to tighten it up, and then try it again until you get the lines just parallel or if you're doing the lines right on top of each other so they're right on top of each other. Um, if you, This is just a piece of junk plywood I had, but if you have a better piece of plywood you really don't want to make marks on, you can always tape a piece of paper onto it a little bit off the edge and then you could be mar making your marks on a piece of paper and without messing up your plywood at all. For the combination square, if you don't have a really small file like this, very, very thin that fits in the slot, you can get a shim or some little thin piece of wood, wrap a piece of like 220 sandpaper around it, and stick in the slot and file that little nub down until you get it the um, square, truly square. This is a fairly cheap combination square. It says made in the USA, but other than that, it doesn't even say who made it. There's no manufacturer at all marked on there anywhere. It's got different rules, 16th of an inch, um, 32nd of an inch on this one, an eighth of an inch, and 16th of an inch on that again. So you can move, you can flip this around and stuff, and, and get what um, side you want to do your markings on. There's another brand called Starret, which um, makes really super nice combination squares, but it's very super expensive. They make it so you can read it really good. The contrast is really good, and it's much more precision than this. And don't forget on um, most of these. There's a little scribe tool on the end. Mine's gone. I don't even know where I got this for. 
Um, usually you could pop it out and as you're marking something you could use the scribe and scribe a little mark. And if it was put back in there I would have that so but it's gone. So it's kind of a little hidden thing that some people don't know about. Well that's it for today. Um, if you liked it please hit subscribe and you can check out my new videos when they come out because I'm going to still continue working on my workbench. Here's three other legs in progress glued up. Um, and the top pieces I have subsections all done right now. I just need to start getting ready to glue those together and I'm going to start making a, another video of that when that when I start getting that part ready. And then still hopefully I get going on my under the um, table saw um, dust collector, I couldn't think of the name, and I'm going to build some shelves into it and maybe some little drawers for parts for the router because it's for the dust collector for the router. So it'll be a box all the way around the router and then some shelves and stuff on the side. And that'll be interesting and in getting that all connected up underneath the table saw. Um, anyway, hit subscribe. Thank you. I also did a blog article on this with a little more details. Um, it's in the link down here in this corner. If you click on that, it'll go right to that.